Good morning, scholars. Welcome back to Listen to Reading. If you are listening to this video, that means that you are on the last row on the, of Listen to Reading on your character passport. If you are still on the setting passport, you should not be listening to this. So, you need to be on the character passport, that's the one with the leaves on it, in order to be listening to this section of Listen to Reading. This is part nine of Diary of a Wimpy Kid. I'm so happy that you're back at Listen to Reading. We're going to continue on with our story. Um, when we left off, we were reading about Greg during Halloween. So now, in Greg's journal, as you can see, it is now November. So we've switched months. We're past Halloween now, and let's begin. Thursday. On the bus ride into school today, we passed by Grandma's house. It got rolled with toilet paper last night, which I guess was no big surprise. Stop and think. Why would Grandma's house get rolled by toilet paper and it not be a surprise? Now, if you remember correctly, Greg and Raleigh were hiding out from some high schoolers after trick-or-treat, and they, hide, they hid out at Greg's grandma's house. And then they ran back to their house. I do feel a little bad, because it looked like it was going to take a long time to clean up. But, on the bright side, grandma is retired, so she probably didn't have anything planned for today anyway. Now, we're thinking about characters and their personalities. Reading that last paragraph, what do you think about Greg's personality? In your journal, you're going to write what you think Greg's personality is like based on that last paragraph that we just read. You can pause the video and when you're done, start the video again. All right, welcome back. If you have started playing the video again, it's because you finished that question in your journal. You wrote about the way that Greg acts or his personality. Now, I think that Greg seems a little bit selfish um, and like he doesn't care much because he's the reason his grandma's house got TP'd and yet he's saying that it's fine because she's retired so she, could, she has time to clean it up rather than offering to help her because it's his fault. Wednesday. In third period, Mr. Underwood, our phys ed teacher, announced that boys will be doing a wrestling unit for the next six weeks. If there's one thing most boys in my school are into, it's professional wrestling. So, Mr. Underwood, might as well have set off a bomb. Lunch comes right after phys ed and the cafeteria was a complete madhouse. I don't know what the school is thinking having a wrestling unit, but I decided I don't want to get twisted into a pretzel for the next month and a half. I'd better do my homework on this wrestling business. So I rented a couple of video games to learn some moves. And you know what? After a while, I was really starting to get the hang of it. And he's saying, does this feel right? And Raleigh's going, yes. No, help! In fact, the other kids in my class had better look out because if I keep this up, I could be a real threat. And here's Greg's imagination. He's in the wrestling ring. And you can see that he's got Raleigh lifted up over his head. Ready to throw him over the railing. Then again, I better make sure I don't do too good. This kid named Preston Mudd got named best athlete of the month for being the best player in, bas in the basketball unit. So they put his picture up in the hallway. You can see it says P. Mudd, athlete of the month. It took people about five seconds to realize how P. Mudd sounded when you said it out loud. And after that, it was all over for Preston. Pea mud, ha! And you can see them laughing at pea mud or Preston mud. Um, and Preston's there with a frown on his face. Now, if they're making fun of 
Preston Mudd after he was named Athlete of the Month. What does that tell you about the way that they act? These two people, the kids in the school. Take a minute and answer that question in your journal. All right, Thursday. Well, I found out today that the kind of wrestling Mr. Underwood is teaching is completely different from any kind they do on TV. So first of all, we have to wear these things called singlets, which look like those bathing suits they used to wear in the 1800s. Here they all are in their singlets. They look like they kind of feel awkward. And second off, second of all, there are no pile drivers or hitting people over the heads with chairs or anything like that. So, as you can tell, this wrestling is a lot different than what Greg expected when he was watching TV over the weekend. There's not even a ring with ropes around it. It's just basically a sweaty mat that smells like it's never been washed before. Ew. Mr. Underwood started asking for volunteers so he could demonstrate some wrestling holds, but there was no way I was going to raise my hand. Me and Raleigh tried to hide out in the back of the gym near the curtain, but that's where the girls were doing their gymnastics unit. And here are the girls, and they're giggling at them in their wrestling singlets. We got out of there in a hurry, and we went back to where the rest of the guys were. Mr. Underwood singled me out probably because I'm the lightest kid in the class and he could toss me around without straining himself. He showed everybody how to do all these called these things called half Nelson and reversal and takedown and stuff like that. When he was doing this one move called the fireman's carry, I felt a breeze down below and I could tell my singlet wasn't doing a good job keeping me covered up. That's when I think my lucky stars, the girls, were on the other side of the gym. And there's the gym teacher throwing Greg around, and the other boys are watching to learn. Mr. Underwood divided us up into weight groups. I was pretty happy about that because it meant I wasn't going to have to wrestle kids like Benny Wells who can bench press 250 pounds. But then I found out who I did have to wrestle. And I would have traded for Benny Wells in a heartbeat. Greg, you'll be paired up with Fregley here, says the gym teacher. Now he and Fregley were paired up because they're both the smallest. Take a second in your journal. Based on the details you've heard about the way Greg looks in this last section to write one sentence about the way Greg looks. What's one thing you learned about him as a character and the way he looks? All right, welcome back. If you are turning this back on, it's because you have finished that last question telling me how Greg looks. Let's continue. Fregley was the only kid light enough to be in my weight class, and apparently Fregley was paying attention when Mr. Underwood was giving instructions, because he pinned me every which way you could imagine. I spent my seventh period getting way more familiar with Fregley than I ever wanted to be. You see the gym teacher blowing his whistle because Fregley pinned Greg. Tuesday. The wrestling unit has totally turned our school upside down. Now kids are wrestling in the hallways, in the classrooms, you name it. But the 15 minutes after lunch where they let us outside is the worst. You can't walk five feet without tripping over a couple of kids going at it. I just try to keep my distance and mark my words. One of these fools is going to roll right onto the cheese and start the cheese touch all over again. Now, if you remember, the cheese touch was the piece of moldy cheese that's on the playground. And if you touch it, no one wants to touch you because they don't want to get the cheese touch. My other big problem is that I have to wrestle Fregley every single day. But this morning, I realized something. If I can move out of Fregley's weight class, I won't have to wrestle him anymore. 
So today, I stuffed my clothes with a bunch of socks and shirts to get myself into the next weight class. But I was still too light to move up. I realized I was going to have to gain weight for real. At first, I thought I should just start loading up on junk food, but then I had a much better idea. Here's Greg with all of these clothes stuffed into his clothes, and he looks pretty funny. You can see socks sticking out everywhere. I decided to gain my weight in muscle, not fat. I've never been all that interested in getting in shape before, but this wrestling unit has made me rethink things. I figure I'll bulk up now. It could actually come in handy down the road. The football unit is coming up in the spring, and they split the teams up into shirts and skins, and I always get put on skins. I think they do that to make all the out-of-shape kids feel ashamed of themselves. If I can pack on some muscle now, it'll be a whole different story next April. And here's the gym teacher saying, Greg Heffley, you're on skins. And Greg, instead of taking his shirt off, is just flexing his muscles so it'll rip off. It's another one of his daydreams. Tonight, after dinner, I got Mom and Dad together and I told them my plan. I told them I was going to need some serious exercise equipment and some weight gain powder, too. I showed them some muscle magazines I got at the store so they could see how ripped I was going to be. And that's where we're going to end for the day. So Greg is talking about gaining muscle so that he can be better in gym class. You should have three details written down in your journal. One about the way that Greg looks. Two about the way that Greg acts. If there is extra time still on the center timer, Take this opportunity to, on the same page, write a summary of what you read today. I will see you back here for part 10, which you'll get to when you get to your plot passport. If you are done with this video, that means that you have finished all of the listen to reading assignments on the character passport and that you can check them all off. And once all of your other assignments are done, you can go see Mrs. Stuckla at the small group table for a conference. I hope that you enjoyed this listen to reading today.